Hello? I'm trying to make a video here. Mary? Yeah, go play in your box. Go and play in that box there. Hey campers, George here, back in the man cave. Yep, past couple of weeks we've had some really good weather and took advantage of it and went out uh, hiking, fishing and all that good stuff with some friends who invited me along. It just didn't last. Got up this morning and the weather, not so good. It's kind of sort of trying to snow, chilly out there. But yesterday, the mailman came by and dropped off this for me a new prize and yep as you can see it's a marbles it is the marbles mr701 sb camp axe brand new let's have a look at it let's check it out together i think what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at it i did get some extras for it so it comes in this box it was kind of what i did was i got this and I've got some extras for it, which I wanted to add to it. Okay. We'll check it out and we see how it does. Now, I consider it a hatchet, not a camp axe. And as you can see here, it's about the size of a hatchet. Maybe a little bit longer in the handle. But overall, to me, hatchet. Have I ever owned one? What do I know about hatchets? Well, nothing. We're about to find out together. You know, I am the proud owner of a Camp Axe and a CRKT Tomahawk. The own uses specially designed for that. I have this axe, which is really a chopping axe. It's pretty big. And then I have the Tomahawk, which is way down, smaller and more convenient to carry and that sort of thing. And I wanted to get something middle of the road. So I thought a hatchet would work for me. So I got this guy from Marbles. Marbles, I believe, are the same or owned or are the same company as Condor Tool and Knife. Now, I have some stuff from Condor. I, I bought my eldest daughter a, a really nice Hudson Bay camp knife from Condor and I really was impressed with it. And I've got some other stuff of theirs. And looking at this, it's not bad. And I'm looking at the handle. It's, you know, it's a wood handle. The first thing I noticed is there's, there's no covering on the handle. You know, when, you, when I got the Camp Axe and I got the uh, uh, Tomahawk, they had kind of a covering on it, like a glaze. And I had to take that off and redo the handle and clean it all up. And then I got some uh, boiled linseed oil and put that on. And I want to do the same thing here. The difference is, I don't have to clean it up. It's nice and smooth, it's plain, it's not covered with anything. So that's a good start. And uh, the weight, it's got some nice weight to it. And Mary's found the box. What do you do, kids? Can't take them anywhere. See, here it is here. And you can see it's, you know, your regular hatchet style, except the, the handle might be a little bit longer. First thing I noticed, it's really thin here. And, you know, like I've said before, I have all palm and no finger grubbies. It's, it's a really nice size for me with my short fingers. Gets right around there. Um, choking up doesn't feel too bad. I, I do want to be able to choke up on it because some of the stuff I want to do uh, when when we go through the uh, after the specs and everything like that and we've had a quick look at this is go out and try it out and one of the things I want to do is to see how much I can do with it and it and does you. say there is a sticker here El Salvador obviously being a Condor style product same company they are in El Salvador and that's all they put on here and on the head it does say marbles right there uh, it doesn't feel really sharp. I doubt if it would cut a piece of paper. Um, no, it's not sharp enough for that. And I'm not surprised. Yeah. So we're probably going to 
at least touch it up and give it a better edge and hopefully that will help. Um, it looks fine, doesn't look like there's any problems with the, the actual edge. So not bad, I like the shape, I do like the choke up to it, nice thin and the big end to the handle here and it does have a lanyard hole in there you can see. Uh, the grain, uh, looking at the bottom, at the bottom of the handle here, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we can get it to focus on there. There you can see it there. It's almost vertical, not quite, but that's not bad. I can't, can't uh, complain about that. And you can see the finish on it here. And as soon as Mary gets out of the way. Anyway, as I was saying before, Mary got all settled in. Uh, the grain is really nice. I like, I like the look of that grain. It looks nice on it there. And like I said, the end is, is nice and straight. Not bad. Uh, it is a, a, a hickory handle, so that's a good thing. Hickory, good for handles, for thing, and you can see at the end there, they have the the round key in there. The finish on the Axia, it is blackened, obviously, and it's not a smooth finish. You can see there, it's kind of a, a marbled finish, not bad. And the blade, I didn't expect it to be sharp, and we'll hopefully take care of that. On the back, it's got a nice flat surface here you can hammer with. So we've got a lot of things we can do with this. So uh, before we go on any further, I'll put up the specs here and everything on it. So you can have a look-see at that. And then hopefully we can get outside. It's a little chilly, but it's uh, right now it's not raining or snowing or anything. So maybe we can get out there and beat up a piece of wood with it and see how that works. But I do want to sharpen it. So... I'm not going to spend a lot of time on sharpening it. I just want to clean up that edge and see if we can get a nice sharp edge and see what we can do with it. Here are the specs. the specs on on the hatchet and i did say that i got some extras for it and i got these from halco work out of germany um this uh, well they the, it is a german company but this stuff is actually made in the united states this is the hatchet collar which would go on here which helps you protect the the handle and then of course uh i do have yeah the the sheath the, you know the sheath for the the, 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 the front here, and that's to protect the axe your edge and of course to protect me we all know how I can cut myself and do silly things like that and a lot of people um, it's probably a good thing to have a sheath Let's get them both from helper and you can see them right there and we're going to put those on as well and that'll add some nice things to end let's do this thing I'm going to call it a hatchet because that's the way I think of this as a hatchet. Um, although, they, like I said, they say it's a camp axe. So we've got that here. The first thing I want to do is just take this sticker off uh, because it's going to be in the way. And you want to get, you don't want to leave anything on here because when I put the uh, uh, boiled linseed oil, you don't want to leave any glue or anything lying around. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to have to do, and that's going to take up a little bit of time because I'm going to need to let it sit and seep into the wood and everything, is put the linseed oil on. So as you can see, I just I put some uh, old newspaper down underneath here. I don't want to get the linseed oil all over the, my desk here. And let's have a quick look. I'll show you how this stuff works if you haven't seen it. Here is the sheath. And this is the one from, like I said, from Helco Work. And it is the hatchet one. And if you go to their website, and I'll put a link below, um, they give you the sizes of the blade that this will fit. And they have different sizes. So you just need to measure this part of your blade and, of course, how long it is here for the strap. And then uh, just choose the one that will fit. This was the straight hatchet, so I didn't have to make any um, odd requests. Their one was a hatchet, made for a hatchet, which is, the, they make their own hatchets. And they said it would, it would fit most standard hatchets. So 
here it goes and then you unclip that and this will go in there and you put the strap on and you just get it reasonably tight and it sits on just like that now uh, it's really easy to get off because um, it, the leather will stretch over time and that so you'll probably move a hole or more but the nice thing is when you uh, when you have it is you can just flip this off and off comes the cover and you can put it back on just like that and slip that on and it holds it on there and this will save you a heap of trouble not only the blade but you so the leather very good leather the you know the one I got for the camp axe it's sitting up there and it's perfect it, it's really working well for me so well made I like the way that covers it and then the other thing we got is this guy here and the hatchet collar same thing again they have different sizes for different axes and hatchets and tomahawks and that sort of thing just go to their website it's pretty straightforward they give you the measurements you can check yours and just order the one you want now i will say that when um, i saw this online and i was on amazon um, they did give me the option to get a sheath with it and i forget how much more it was it was probably about 12 dollars i think the helco one is a little bit more expensive but I know the Helco product, I've used it before, I'm very happy with it and I was willing to spend a little bit, a uh, couple of bucks more, it wasn't a lot, probably three or four dollars more than um, the Condor or the Marbles cover. Here is the uh, handle and your uh, leather string. So what you're going to do is this goes right over here like that. And looking at it now, I'm wondering if this is going to fit. The idea of this is to protect the handle so that when you are um, chopping wood and everything, if you miscut and it hits down here, you're not going to damage the handle. You, you know, you're know, you going to hit the, uh, the leather, which is a little bit more shock, shock absorbent and uh, will protect the handle. This doesn't fit. I'm, I'm a little disappointed there. I need a bigger one. Not a big deal right now. Um, I don't plan on taking this out right now anyway and doing some serious chopping with it. Um, we're going to test it, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Maybe it'll fit my tomahawk and I won't have to send it back. I hate having to do that. Well, you know, look at that. It's almost a perfect fit. So we're going to have to put this on here. Ha ha! And then order another one. Woot! So all we really need to do right now is put the linseed oil on the handle and let that soak in before we get outside and start beating things up. And before I forget, uh, one thing I do have is I got some prime neat's foot oil compound. And you can see this stuff. And it says here, Prime Neat's Foot Oil Compound is a compound for Neat's Foot and other beneficial oils for softening and preserving boots, shoes, harness, and other uh, articles of leather. And what this does is you can put it on your leather and it keeps it moist and it stops it from drying up and cracking and things like that. Something if you do have uh, leather products for your, your axes, even your knife sheaths and things like that, this is a nice thing to have and then all I do is once a year is I have a nasty, as you can see, cloth here. I put the neat sweat oil on it and just wipe it all over the, the leather and, and, and have them hang there and it seeps in and takes care of the leather for me. On the wood handles, I use boiled linseed oil. And you can get these at any hardware store, most any good hardware store will have this stuff. And it's not just a look nice thing. It actually really helps with your grip on the bare wood. It really makes a difference. Trust me on that. And let's do this handle thing quickly. So I'll do that really quickly and we'll let it sit and seep in. It is one of those processes where you have to 
get the oil on there one time and then wait a little bit, let it seep in, get as much in on it, don't be shy with it. And uh, get it, put as much on as you can until you see that the oil is not seeping in anymore. And uh, then you can stop and you can see um, how it's bringing out the the wood. And uh, so you just keep adding that, which means I, I need to, I'm done now putting this, at least this first helping on here. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but it really brings out the grain on the wood. So we'll let that sit for a while and hopefully the weather will get a little bit better. We'll go outside and we'll beat up a piece of wood. Not perfect, but it's better than it was. We got an edge on it. Um, as you can see, I'm horrible at sharpening things and I need help. So what I've been using is I've got myself a workshop and it works great. And I'll put a link to the video below of, uh, showing how to use it. If you're as bad as me at sharpening knives, any sort of blade, this is the thing to get. So here you can see I added the handle protection for my t-hawk see it there yeah. so here you can see um, I've put the uh, boiled linseed oil onto the handle it's going to need a little bit more but you can see how it brings out the grain and everything it really does a good job on the wood and like I said they didn't uh, do any finish to it except smooth it out, sandpaper it or whatever they do to it. Really nice. Liking that. And now I've got a good grip on here. My hand's not going to slip up and down. So here we are in the South 40 and we're going to beat up some wood. I have a couple of pieces of wood that I want to just chop up and play with. Uh, as you can see, this is not a very big piece. It's about inch and a half wide. I really don't think I'll be tackling anything heavier than this when I'm outdoors with my hatchet. Now, oh, by the way, I did see this referred to as a pack axe, but I still like to think of it as a hatchet. And I have a slightly thicker one here. Now, if I'm going to be outdoors in, uh, you know, playing in the outdoors, maybe making a base camp, um, and we're getting to wood this thick to build your fort, I, I think I would rather take my uh, cold steel trail boss. Uh, that's more suited towards that thing. I wouldn't think the hatchet would, uh, would be able to, well, it probably could, but it would take a lot of work to get through anything heavier than this. But we'll see. I did touch up the blade a little bit better than it was. It wasn't bad. It would have worked just fine. But the, the work I want to do with it, with maybe seeing if I can feather with it, um, that sort of thing, carving stuff, um, it needed to be a little bit sharper. So I just touched it up a little bit. So safety first, uh, got my gloves on. And working, a working surface is important. Uh, as you can see down here, I have a workshop table for my axes and knives and that for testing them out and uh, keeping it low legs apart be careful how you cut with it. So, can we chop this piece of wood this wood and see how it does now that, that doesn't feel too bad I was holding it maybe a little bit too low there but let me adjust my grip here So you saw there, uh, right through that, not bad. Oh, it felt in my hand, felt pretty good. Um, 
with that linseed oil on uh, makes a big difference. Your hand doesn't slip as easily uh, when you just have a plain wood or you have that varnish finish on it. You saw that went right through there, no problem. Cool. Just like that. How to take an axe or something out of a piece of wood. Don't try and lift it this way. If you just push down on the handle, it comes off nice and easy. Good way to do it and always try to keep the hole of your blade in the wood. Don't keep any sharp bits sticking out. You might just cut yourself. So there you go. Let's see what we can do with a bigger piece of wood. Let's give it a couple of whacks and see how we do. This is obviously a drier piece of wood. You can see then it's fairly hard wood. Oh. It's chopping into it, um, but it's not easy. Obviously, uh, I'm learning here, and that is a hatchet. Doesn't have the power of a true camp axe shorter handle and so your leverage is not as hard although it's fairly heavy and it's not uncomfortably heavy it's got some weight to it and it is cutting into the wood no problem there so let's keep at it there you go so that wasn't as bad as i thought it would be this wood is kind of hard and it is very dry. So it did that. Like I said, I don't think I'd like to deal with anything bigger than this using the hatchet. So we had no problem there as far as the handling of it. Um, I'm not a big fan of gloves. I will tell you that I, I really struggle with gloves and I've yet to find a pair of gloves that really works for me well. I'm still looking and if you have any recommendations in the comments. Not bad. I do like the shape of this, especially for that choking up. Look at that. You can really choke up on it. So, speaking of choking up, let's see if we can get some feathering out of it or something. Let's see, let's see if we can skin this wood. It is a hatchet. And of course, you got an amateur dealing with it. <laughs> that would be me. So it will take the bark off, no problem there. And that edge is working pretty well. So you can see there. What I do, I'm going to take a piece of that big piece of wood. Let's see if we can split it and then maybe feather the split pieces. Oh, I went right in. So it'll split the wood, no problem there, wow, and holding the wood this way and doing it this is a lot safer than having the wood there and having a swing at it, so that worked out pretty good, but it got through it, huh, should we see if it'll feather, how's that blade doing, seems to be okay. It'll make a couple of curls, but they're not very thin. But I didn't really expect them to be thin. So it will make you curls. You can see here. 
that's not too tacky. That'll get you a fire going, I'm pretty sure. Huh, not bad. So you can feather with it. And I'm wondering if this has a good enough edge to strike a ferro rod. Well, let's give it a try. Trusty ferro rod. Here it's. I doubt if we'll get this going. It's kind of windy and all and hmm. it's not quite the 90 degrees you need. I'm pretty sure you could uh, in a tough situation strike a ferro rod with it the edge here it's not quite 90 you could probably clean that up and make it a nice 90 on here and uh, it, 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 you can see it does strike but I don't know if that's enough it won't be easy and of course, really, you should never use the blade. The marbles, what they call a camp axe, pack axe, me, it's my hatchet. Not bad, not bad. Uh, compared to the Tomahawk, my CRKT, this has more weight to it. The Tomahawk isn't quite as heavy as this which makes it easier to handle. You don't get as tired when you're dealing with it. And I could strike on that and everything. But I think for a lot of, a lot of tomahawks are not really designed for heavier work. This will handle a little bit more than a tomahawk as far as the size of the wood you're dealing with. And then of course I have my cold steel trail boss, my camp axe, and that'll handle just about anything I need it to. And like I said, I do like this, how thin it is here, and you have your lanyard hole. Um, I'm not a big fan of having a lanyard. I find that when I'm chopping in that, they get in the way. But I do like to put a piece of bright 550 cord in there, because my eyesight isn't what it used to be. It just helps me find things. Although this is not exactly small, should be able to find it without it. But I like 1045 steel, carbon steel which means you do have to look after it. You can't just leave it. It's not stainless. This you'd have to, you know, keep it oiled, keep it sharp. And if you do that, it'll last you a long time. Just like I told you. There you go. Marbles, camp axe, hatchet, pack axe, whatever you want to call it, there it is. Don't forget now. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back again. I see the mailman. He might be delivering. Ah, he drove past the horror. Maybe with another axe, hatchet, knife, something sharp and shiny, I'm sure. You know I can't walk past one. And when I find one, I share it with you. <laughs> Just saying. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there. Bye.